All right, so how can you be more effective with your free plus shipping strategy? For those of you guys that don't know me, my name is Juan Valdez, and if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, join the VFAM. The VFAM is a movement and a community of people that strive to do a lot more than what society has out for us to do. What I mean by that is rather than the whole, you know, go to school, get a job, cram your way up the ladder for 40 years and to finally retire and get a job, we want to do, you know, take a similar path, have better results in half the time, right? So that's what you want to do here. To kind of just jump right into it, you know, obviously you guys know when it comes down to e-commerce, there's two main strategies. You have your retail offers and your free plus shipping offers, right? Something that a lot of us have, have done or, you know, currently still do, it's something that, you know, obviously when I first got started in e-commerce, I used to still do is, you know, mainly focus on the front end of the business, which is mainly, you know, getting sales from either your Instagram shout outs or your, uh, you know, your Facebook ads. I actually made a previous video, you know, talking about the whole front end strategy and why you should start to transition more to the back end strategy. And what I wanted to do in this video is just build off of that video. So when it comes down to it, obviously you guys know the whole free plus shipping strategy. Basically what you set it up is you advertise your product as free. The customer can get the product for free, but basically just pay a certain amount for, for shipping, right? They pay, you know, as low as like $7.99 or they can be as high as, you know, maybe $15.95. And obviously the profit is made with charging that shipping price. But there is another way you can make more profit than just charging for shipping, right? And the way you can do that is by having a backend system. And I'm gonna jump right into, you know, somewhat of the backend system that we have, except in a little more detail than on the last video. Again, you wanna make sure you focus on the backend because once you're getting that customer through the door for your free plus shipping, again, you're gonna make your profits, of course, with your shipping, that's what they're gonna pay for, but there is a way you can get more profits and I'm gonna show you guys exactly how you can do it. You know, when you're driving traffic to your store, you're gonna be collecting emails, right? So when you're driving, traffic my terrible my uh, spelling is terrible if you guys haven't noticed when you're driving traffic you will be collecting emails right you're going to be getting email that's regardless right people are going to be coming in um, they're going to be seeing your product and then you're going to have you know two types of different people coming in and two types of different emails that you're going to be getting right obviously when somebody comes in they see the product they may you know, fill out their information and then not end up checking out. So what happens is now you have your, you know, this email, but this email is for what we call a non-buyer. Both emails you have, you're gonna have your non-buyers and you're gonna have your buyer emails and both emails are super helpful and you can take advantage of both of them. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly how. So what we'll do is we're gonna start off with non-buyer emails, which is, which my, again, my handwriting is terrible. When on buyer emails, which of course are valuable. Again, these are just people that come in, don't check out. They kind of just put their information in and for some reason they didn't follow all the way through. You're gonna have those people, it's regardless, right? It happens to all of us. You know, sometimes I end up liking a product, I'll go all the way through it and right before I check out, you know, I get distracted. I'm either driving or I'm doing something. So I got distracted, didn't get to check out. So this is the first kind of emails you'll usually get. Then you're gonna have what we call your buyer emails, which these are more valuable since they purchased purchased from your store. Buyer emails are gonna be the emails that you collect after, you know, obviously someone uh, goes through the complete transaction in your store. And these are gonna be a lot more valuable. The reason why is because these people already have that trust built in within your store, right? They already trust you, they already made that transaction, so they're good. These are super valuable because if someone bought once, there's a good chance you can get them to buy again. And I'm gonna show you exactly, you know, how you guys can do that. After you collect both of these emails, you wanna make sure that you pretty much have list set up for, you know, non-buyers, which are gonna be basically people that drop off, you know, after they check, before they check out. And you wanna make sure you have a separate list for people that buy. You wanna have what we call email sequences. One thing that we show in our P2P accelerator for a lot of our students is how to set up different sequences for emails, right? And you're gonna have your non-buyer you know, sequence, which is gonna be basically like an abandoned cart sequence and amount in emails, a set of emails that basically get sent out to the customer that didn't check out and it goes to every single customer. And then you're gonna have your buyer emails, which is a sequence of emails that are gonna go out to customers after they buy, right? But you wanna make sure that your non-buyers have received a certain kind of emails. Your buyers also receive a certain kind of email. Both of these will be receiving different kind of emails, right? So your non-buyers, they're gonna be receiving different emails. Emails like, you know, hey, you forgot to check out. Um, you have 24 hours left until this offer expires. 
you know, what happened? Did we do something wrong? Why didn't you finish your order? That's, those are the kind of emails that you're gonna be sending out to your non-buyers. And for your buyers, it's gonna be a little bit different because your buyer emails, these, these people already bought. So for these people, you're gonna be uh, sending them, again, different follow-ups, just to touch base, see how their order was. You're gonna be sending them out content emails, you know, showing them different benefits, not only of their products, but of other products. And then of course, more promotion emails of congruent products of what they bought. That's huge because what people end up doing is, they end up sending emails that aren't congruent to the products that they just bought. That can, obviously, you know, it'll work for some people, but the more congruent you can be based on, you know, sending emails based on the product that someone bought, the more likely you have a chance of the person you know, buying the next product that you're sending out. So you wanna make sure that these emails are congruent for this specific list. And for those of you guys that don't know, you can use many different email providers to set up specific lists based on products that are bought. So if you have a general store, you can set up a list for specific products that someone buys. If you have a niche store, you can do the same thing. Even though for niche stores, it may be a little bit easier because for niche stores, obviously you have a lot of the similar products. So you can probably send out any kind of products as upsells. But for general stores, you definitely want to have a specific list for a certain kind of product so usually you're not advertising all of your products usually you have your top products which are the ones that you're, you're running traffic so usually your free plus shipping offer so uh, you want to have a specific list for that same product and make sure that, that in that list the emails are are going out with congruent offers uh, of the products that was purchased on the free plus shipping offer so you want to make sure that obviously you have received a certain kind of emails usually the focus is for them to finish order. Uh, too much about the follow-up and what kind of follow-up you should be doing with your customers after they buy. Again, following up with your customers after they buy is huge because you're making another point in contact and letting the customer know like, hey, you're there and, and you really care about the transaction, the process. So uh, you can actually check out the last video that I made touching up on the back end uh, if you wanna learn a little bit more about the follow-up. But usually follow-up content and congruent, congruent, offers. These are the, obviously you're gonna have these kind of emails for buyer's emails and these kind of emails for non-buyer emails. Your non-buyer emails will usually come from abandoned cart and then your buyer emails will usually come post-purchase after someone has makes a transaction into, you know, obviously your store. It's gonna be one, they're gonna be one of your customers that you have in your Shopify account. So just so you have a clear understanding, this is exactly what I'll do is I'll actually put this in another order. So I'll move this up here to make it a little more clear for you guys. After you have both of your different lists set up for your non-buyers and your buyers, you wanna establish you know, what kind of emails are gonna be you know, being sent out to both of these different lists. So for those of you guys that you know, may not know what apps to use for you know, like our abandoned carts or what kind of apps to use overall for your Shopify store, I actually have a video also going over the top apps that I recommend for anyone to use in their Shopify store. So you can actually refer back to that video to find out which app exactly you should use for cart abandonment. And this app, these apps usually make it super easy for you to send out these emails. So I'd recommend, you know, using these apps, setting these emails up, you know, on the back end. Usually a lot of people don't end up sending these emails and they lose out on a ton of money all the time, right? So you wanna make sure if you're driving traffic from your Instagram, shout out to your Facebook ads, it's natural to have customers drop off and you're not gonna have everybody buy. But if you're following up through emails, you know, back to back to back, you have a much higher chance of actually getting these, these customers to come in and actually buy. So for us, I've seen, you know, our stores go f increase, you know, in 10 to 20% in sales from the same amount of traffic that we were driving simply by, you know, starting to include these abandoned cart emails. We, we, you know, when we first got started, obviously we didn't know to include them. So obviously I want to save you guys the time and share with you guys that you should include abandoned cart emails off the jump. If you have abandoned cart emails set in place, usually, you know, two to three or so, you can see an increase in sales just from abandoned orders. So that's for sure something you want to implement. But now when it comes down to post-purchase, you know, it's a little bit of a different strategy. So you want to make sure, again, you're going by somewhat of what I talked about in the previous video. You want to have your follow-up. Then from your follow-up, you want to have some content emails to provide some value. And then from your value, you provide, you know, the promotions. You want to have these to be congruent promotions. But the reason you want to do that is, you know, because it's valuable to nurture all the leads that are coming in, especially the ones that are buying. If the customer already bought from you, you want to make sure you nurture them in any way possible. So you can have these customers you know, buying from you not only once, but more to multiple times. You know, with this strategy, the good thing is that with both of these emails, even though you're gonna have separate lists, 
You can still also send emails to both lists at the same time. They can be similar emails. Any emails that are incentivizing your customers to come back. So you wanna focus on for sure discount codes. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. Start off with like as low as 10%, then go up as high as 30% and just test it out, see what works. And you can also do your, you know, your store-wide free shipping you know, for a weekend, you can try both of those out to see which ones work. You know, what a lot of the top e-commerce, you know, guys are doing is, they're not even focused on making money on their free plus shipping front end offer. Like when the first customer first comes and buys free plus shipping offer, they're not even focusing on making money there. They're just focusing on breaking even there because they have a back end system in place that will generate them more money in the long run. A strategy you wanna make sure you implement to become more effective with free plus shipping is making sure you have a back end system in place utilizing simple emails. For those of you guys that don't know too much about, you know, the difference between a front end and a back end strategy, me and my business partner, Samir, uh, we actually put together a P2P accelerator specifically to teach people how to become, you know, e-commerce entrepreneurs, showing everybody from step A to Z, what they need to do to how to start a Shopify store, all the way to how to run a profitable Facebook ad. So if you haven't already, you can actually check the link in the description where you can check out a P2P accelerator. We have a free training put together for you guys. You guys can check it all out. It goes into a little bit more detail about e-commerce and dropshipping overall. So I hope you guys got value on this, how to improve or how to be more effective with your Shopify, uh, free plus shipping offers. If you did, you leave me a thumbs up. Also, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about this strategy. If you've tried it out, how it's worked for you. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, join the VFAM, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.